स्थापकाये च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिने अवतार वरिष्ठाय राम कृष्णाय ते नमः In the last class, we were thinking of bhakti and prema. Bhakti is devotion. I am devoted to God. My all aspects of existence, from gross bodily existence to the core of my being, the innermost existence, all layers are devoted to God. Usually what we do, all layers are devoted to myself. I want enjoyments, I want this, I want that. I keep, I am keeping body for my enjoyment, I am keeping family for my enjoyment. I am keeping all things of the world for my enjoyment. So the whole thing is for me, mine and for me. Now, if, when it turns out to be for God, God's for God, whatever I possess, it belongs to God. Whatever I do is for pleasing God. I have nothing to gain from it. Then I am devoted. All my layers of existence are devoted. Then we call it bhakti. Bhakti, going on giving myself in various ways, various aspects of my existence again and again offering slowly the inner love awakens. Love is something which transcends all these layers, bodily layer, the sense, senses, pranas, manas, buddhi, intellect, buddhi, manas, mind, all these layers it transcends love. Love is beyond all beyond senses, beyond mind, beyond intellect. Uh, there it awakens uh, and when it is directed towards God, it flows without any resistance, without any hindrance. It flows in torrents and reaches the Lord. This love is what makes me an ecstatic love of God, makes God to present himself to receive that love. Prema, uh, the matured state of bhakti. Bhakti matures into love. In uh, various, we pass through various levels of bhakti. Mm. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he different in their philosophy. Mm. Achintya Bheda Bheda, it's called Achintya, just like Shankara's Kevala, Kevala Dvaita of Shankaracharya, Dvaita of Madhvacharya. The philosophy he adopts is called Achintya Bheda Bheda. There is Bheda and Abheda simultaneously. How opposite things can be there? It is, you cannot, we cannot understand. It is Achintya. There is Bheda and Abheda simultaneously. So, just like wave and ocean, wave and ocean appear to be different, but only ocean is there except ocean, nothing is there. Waves are seen separately and ocean we see, see separately. As you go deeper, there are no waves. Wave also is just a water of the ocean standing in a particular, moving in a particular way. Uh, there are waves, we distinguish wave from the ocean, but they are one and the same. There cannot be a wave without a ocean. There can be a ocean without a wave. So, the wave and oceans, like that. Now, bhakti, bhakta and bhakti, uh, when we see this love of God, is what is going to take the jiva, to the 
reality, the ultimate reality, is going to realize God through love. Bhakti matures into pure realization when he becomes one with God and God reveals his various aspects of existence, saguna sakara, nirguna nirakara, from the just beginning of bhava, first manifestation of the attraction for God is I forget the world in thought of God is called bhava. From bhava we pass through various stages. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his this Ajinti Veda Veda they take seven steps to realization of God. Last is Prema. Prema is the last stage. First stage is Bhava. I am entering to Bhava means I am becoming uh, the world is disappearing from my consciousness, my awareness. I am not aware of the world in thought of divine. Thinking of God, I have forgotten my body, forgotten my world. Uh, I am in some other loka, in a world of its own, then it's called bhava. The spiritual experience as love of God begins from the bhava and ends with prema, ecstatic love of God. He is un- totally unconscious of the world in prema. He jumps and dances unknown. People cannot understand even. Uh, then he becomes silent. Then he enters into deep samadhi. So these levels of Chaitanya consciousness is explained as the prema. So Bhakti is the only essential thing. One obtains love of God by constantly chanting His name and glories. How does love awaken in a jiva? Bhakti is what I dedicate my all aspects of my existence to God is bhakti. How does the love awaken? Love awakening is my spirit awakening. My body is silenced and spirit awakens from within. The Chaitanya awakens, the Jada becomes Jada on this, it will not move. Hmm. Jada remains Jada, Chaitanya awakens from within. So how to awaken this love? Sri Ramakrishna says, singing the names of glories of God. Singing the names of glories of God and chanting His name. Go on chanting His name. That will awaken the love of God. Uh, mantra, which we are going to repeat the name of God, is what comes from the transcendental realm into the relative to hold the jiva holds and it takes away to the transcendental mantra. Mantra, when I repeat the mantra, slowly I identify with the mantra, I mount on the mantra. Mantra takes me to the transcendental realm, the realm beyond. Um, what, just like there is flood, floods are there everywhere, water is overflowing. The people do not know, they just climb over the house or somehow, many die, many climb the trees, trees fall off, houses fall off. Finally. By the time people, government comes to know, many lives have gone, but some are hanging on the top of the tree, some are standing on the roof. Yeah. Three, four, only their head is seen, they are standing on the roof, waiting for death or for support. Then the helicopters come and leave ropes and small bowls to sit or hold on to. And the plane, the helicopter comes down. The people climb onto it and the helicopter takes it to a safe place. 
same thing is mantra mantra is what god's name is not something like name of a person it is god's name it is associated with om uh, repeating the mantra slowly you merge in the mantra you become one with it mm. how the love awakens you see you are going backward it is taking you it has come from the transcendental all other names and forms nama rupa vriksha so uh, it may be earth it may be stone it may be monkey whatever is there if you repeat it will not become mantra it becomes tantra only uh, or it will remain yantra uh, mantra is by which by thought mananat trayate just go on thinking of it it will take you to the beyond so when you repeat the name of god when you are calling on god it links to the divine when you are calling on the god there is a awareness consciousness i am calling god when i call my brother or sister shout their name they hear and come it is they are they have got associated with the name nama uh, when i call they identify with the call somebody is calling me they have identified with the name so the call pulls them here it is with the objects of the world they the mantra similarly it is associated with the god it is what it has come from the transcendental to take you hmm. here the object comes when i call my brother or sister by name the object comes to me in mantra i climb over the mantra i become one with the mantra mantra travels to the transcendental realm it takes me takes my existence to the beyond hmm. it is a, i am well, mantra rudha i am becoming mantra rudha by repeating the mantra just like say, i sit on a horse and horse start flying away hmm. it's climbing over the mantra slowly repeating the mantra again and again with love with feeling the presence of god in whatever aspect i think of god i may be i think of god as rama i think of krishna or shri rama krishna i may think of in any form with a particular name nama roopa i may be associating and repeating and slowly i start becoming one with the nama when i calls my brother or sister they become one with the nama and they start coming oh somebody is calling me nama is the one which links and brings object here i become one with the nama of god their person becomes one with they are one with the name their name here i become one with the name not object i am the subject who is calling on the god it becomes this is the state when i is totally become one and mantra is alone taking me i am repeating then it's i am supposed to have become mantra rudha mantra arudha my soul has climbed over the mantra and mantra is slowly taking to the actual reality it has come from there to take me there so this we see repeating the name of god is first thing what it does is to purify the whole bodily existence shri ram krishna says he is mantra uh, god's name god's name is it an ordinary thing it purifies body and mind it purifies 
it sanctifies it removes all the dirt it removes all the actions i have done of holding on to this false world it washes off it cleans is shri ramakrishna's words is name of god an ordinary thing it purifies the body and mind and this body and mind what we have done we have put in the world uh, and made it dirty and this dirt is removed wash down uh, children go uh, rainy season they jump about little little water will be there in that they will sit and lot of muddy water mud in the ground mother is not seeing they will sit and pata pata hands feet everything when they come out they are filled with slash of mud hmm cloth has become muddy this one mother suddenly sees holds him by hand drags that person boy or girl home first thing removes all the clothes wearing then uh, wash mm-hmm. just like the vehicle is washed in the car wash mm-hmm. with pressure water she washes every bit eyes ears nose every whole thing body cleans down like that it cleans down not only bodily existence and mind it enters within where the vasanas are stored vasanas come from within vasanas come from within whatever i do to for every action there are two reactions ah uh, one is karma phala other is vasana uh, i throw a stone at a monkey and monkey gets hurt Uh, now uh, that karma is there i have to work out the pain i have given to monkey i must get it back <laughs> karma phala and then it becomes a habit moment i see monkey i will take up a stone it has become a vasana uh, how it vasana has become the monkey's thought will come with the catapult thought mm, how to throw stone now to the monkey so vasana is another thing getting accumulated along with karma and this karma phala and vasana remain in the unconscious mind and that unconscious depth of unconscious my mind where it is associated with chaitanya which leaves the body and goes is called karma shaya in karma shaya it goes and stays still gets stored up there hmm. slowly it gets released one by one karma and vasana according to the opportunity that comes then he will be getting joys and sorrows of life now amidst this the vasanas that are stored one by vasana comes another vasana comes and i see a jalebi immediately the vasana comes i must get and eat it children you must see the moment they see the, they were going somewhere with father and mother walking they see a shop they see something immediately papa papa mama mama hold the hand and pull them i want that now huh? how the vasana is making driving them making the father and mother pull not only he goes he pulls the other two also and gets it that vasana how powerful it is you see where this vasana is stored name of god you are repeating with faith uh, vishwasa you have with that you are repeating the mantra uh, one day you want to transcend and go this mantra repetition it goes inside this karmashaya and like a wheel what wheel the vishnu hand krishna's hand chakra sudarshana chakra 
like Sudarshana chakra, it starts cutting down the vasanas. You are just sitting and repeating the name of God. The whole thing from outermost to the innermost vasana kshaya is taking place every moment. New awakening is happening. After a few years, you will see the whole thing has turned out to be a golden person, Hiranmaya Purusha. It is giving light of consciousness everywhere. Uh, the Papa Purusha has died and the Hiranmaya Purusha has emerged out. This transformation, just name of God, Thakur says, repetition of the name of God and singing the glories, names and glories of God will make you, will awaken the love of God. But how deep, where all it works, you see. Uh, like that Sudarshana Chakra, inside it goes, you are repeating here, it is cutting down your vasanas. Vasanas that are going to drag you to the world, those vasanas are cut. No more future tendencies to enter into the world. If you enter the world, it is to give, not to receive. I want to serve, I want to love, I want to give something to the people. I don't want anything in return. Little body so has to be sustained, nature will do it. Somehow she procures food and sees that this body is alive, which I have kept for others. Nothing to worry. So, this is one part of our existence, that is repetition of God's name. On the other side, we see some other aspect. I am repeating the name of God and another aspect is singing the names and glories of God. I am singing. Singing is another aspect where uh, I am tuning with nature. Here I am tuning with God through the repetition of God's name. Nama Japa is making me one with the divine. Singing the names and glories of God, I am becoming one with the nature. I am becoming one with nature. Slowly I am getting, becoming one with nature. What pervades nature, I can experience. What transcends nature, I can experience. Anubhava. Here we see our understanding, our realizations. When I become one with nature, I can peep beyond nature. Prakriti Atita. What is there? Prakriti Atita I can see only when I become one with the cosmic existence, one with the nature which pervades the entire universe. This is what we do every day in yoga, to become one with divine and one with the nature. Uh, become one with nature, expand your mind. Become one with all beings, expand your heart. Become one with God, expand your consciousness, awareness. These are the three aspects of my existence which I expand to the infinite level. So this expansion is, uh, one is repetition of the name of God, Nama Japa, and another singing the names and glories of God. These two Sri Ramakrishna advocates to, uh, how clearly he writes, you see. Hmm. One obtains the love of God by constantly chanting his name and singing the, his glories. All saints held on to this. Our Ramakrishna tradition, the Gopal Irma, Agoramani Devi, who comes to Sri Ramakrishna with baby Krishna in her arms, hmm, dangling his feet, he is coming, mother is holding, 
Krishna, baby Krishna in her arms and you see she, somebody gives her a name, some sadhu is going, repeat this name of God, you will realize God. She holds on to that. Meera, somebody gives a Krishna's image and gives a mantra. Mother says, he is your husband, he is your everything, immediately accepts and goes on calling on him, loving him. Agoramani Devi, Gopal in mind, Ramakrishna's life. Mantra, she goes on repeating the mantra day and night, constantly for 40 years. Hmm. She, God comes in her arms now. How he appears, you see. How he offers himself. Mother, I have come, you are calling, no? Small baby is coming. Hmm. Totapuri Maharaj. Guru says, Tattvamasi. Uh, you are that. Go and practice this. Aham Brahmasmi now. He goes on repeating, Aham Brahmasmi. What is that Aham? What is that Brahman? Takes 40 years. Finishes the sadhana. Yes, I came. I hit the target. This uh, attainment. So we see that for every human, just by the virtue of possessing a human body, he can transcend nature, go beyond, realize God, and be free forever, eternally free. So this is the assurance of Sri Krishna. Call and God. Now he is telling the repeating the singing the names of glories of God and repeating mantra. Then elsewhere he says four things will lead you to realizing God. One is the singing the names and glories of God. The other is Ekanta Vasa. Whenever you get time, one hour, one day, three days, one month. Whatever time you get, go to a solitude, call on God. Retire from all things, turn the torch on yourself, turn the torch on God, try to find out who you are. So this, what is that God? Who am I loving? Self-introspection, analysis of the reality. So here, we see Ekanta Vasa, Sri Ramakrishna. Then Satsanga, who goes on again and again telling, again and again telling, what is this God? What are you? Again, it reminds the moment we enter into the world, the Vasanas take over and we move about with Raga Dvesha in the world. Again, there is a look, look here, look here. The Guru says, Satsanga says, Oh, what you saw was only a dream. Nothing existed there. You are seeing just a single dream. There is a reality. There is God beyond. You can reach it. How is that? How is God? What is God? What is this world? What are you? He goes on explaining again and again. The duties and purpose of human life again and again brings oh world is anitya don't worry anything happening here call on God he goes on so satsanga singing the names of glories of God now and then ekanta vasa then uh, the last one is uh, yes. uh, intense prayer uh, Repetition of the names called Ekanta Vasa, going into solitude. And then the last one, the four of the four, is intense prayer. Intense prayer is where 
all other seekings intensity in one direction all other seekings are brought to nil it is suppressed it is closed or otherwise mind is split and moves in hundred and now it wants this next to another thing one problem comes another problem so he is jumping from one thing to other life is going away now intense prayer makes him attend to all these things as an outsider like he doesn't take inside he doesn't enter he fulfills all the needs and demands of life and hmm, he becomes ekantavasa satsanga singing the names and glories of god and intense prayer these four will remake a person awaken his pure love for god om shanti 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 hari om tat sat shri ram krishna arpanamastu